Did you know you can run your ChatGPT prompts without even opening up your browser? Automating your prompts lets you get even more done with AI, turning an individual workflow into a reliable, scalable process for you and your team. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started automating ChatGPT with Zapier. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use low-code automation and AI to help our members and clients save time and create more consistent workflows. To learn more about our services, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more automation tips and tutorials every week, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect your ChatGPT account to Zapier. Then, I'll walk you through a couple of your best options for sending automated prompts. Let's get into it. Before you can automate ChatGPT with Zapier, you'll need to connect your ChatGPT account to your Zapier account. Zapier can only automate the apps that you've personally authorized. You'll also need to have a payment on file with OpenAI to cover the API charges, which are typically going to be very low. You can check out OpenAI's pricing page linked in the resources board below for more specific detail, but we're usually talking about a few cents per prompt at most. You're not gonna be breaking the bank with this, unless you accidentally set up an infinite loop with one of your automations, which would be bad, so don't do that. To connect your account and set up your payment method, you'll need to go to platform.openai.com and sign in with your OpenAI account. You can use the same credentials that you use to log in to ChatGPT, but you can't use the usual chatbot interface for these settings. When you automate ChatGPT with Zapier, you've got to take the back door and access the API. Here, you can see the developer platform for ChatGPT, but don't worry, you don't need to write any code to automate ChatGPT as long as you're using software like Zapier. First, to add a payment method to OpenAI and start using the API in your automations, click on the gear to access your settings. Click on billing, and then you can add your payment details here. Now let's walk through connecting your OpenAI account to Zapier. Keep the OpenAI platform open in one tab and open up Zapier in another tab. Sign in and click on Apps in the left-hand menu. Then select Add a new connection. Search for ChatGPT and pick it when it comes up. Now you'll need to provide an API key and possibly an organization ID. To get both of these, go back to the OpenAI platform. To create an API key, start by clicking on Dashboard. Then select a project where you want to create an API key. If you want, you can just stick with the default project. Click on API keys on the left and create a new secret key. Give your key a descriptive name. Then you can choose what permissions to grant this key. For the sake of automating ChatGPT with Zapier, you'll typically want to stick with all. Click Create Secret Key to finish. Now you can copy the secret key and paste it into Zapier. If your OpenAI account includes multiple organizations, you can specify which organization to use by providing its ID here. To get your organization ID, go back to OpenAI and click on the settings gear. On this general page under organization, you can see the ID for your currently selected organization. Copy it and paste it into Zapier. But if you don't have multiple organizations on your account, you can skip this part. Finish connecting your account by clicking Yes, Continue to ChatGPT. Now your ChatGPT account is connected to Zapier and you can easily select it whenever you're building an automation. Now that you've got your accounts connected, let's take a look at actually automating ChatGPT with Zapier. I'll start by showing you a quick prompt using the Analyze Image action because it's really simple. Then I'll give you a more in-depth look at the Conversation action, which has many more settings that you can mess around with. If you're totally brand new to Zapier and want to learn how it works, check out our beginner's guide. In this video, I'm not really going to focus on the basics of Zapier. Instead, I'll just be looking at the ChatGPT integration specifically. To begin, you'll need to make a new Zap and add a trigger. Your trigger can be almost any app you want, but there aren't any available triggers in ChatGPT. So for my example, I've got a Zap with an Airtable trigger. This automation will run every time a new record is added to a specified table and view. But again, you can use almost any app you want as long as it has a trigger. You could run an automation based on events in HubSpot, Shopify, Gmail, Teams, or anything else from Zapier's library of about 7,500 integrations and counting. Just do a quick search on X-Ray tools to see what triggers are available for the apps you use every day. Once you've added your trigger and tested it to pull in some data, add an action to your Zap. Choose ChatGPT as the app. You'll see several options for sending automated prompts to ChatGPT. Most of these are essentially pre-configured prompts. For instance, your first choice here is analyze image content with vision, which does exactly what it says. All you need to do is fill out a few key pieces of information. 
Provide an image like this one retrieved from Airtable and write your prompt. Remember that you can insert dynamic data into your prompt from your trigger or from previous steps in your Zap. You can also set a limit for the number of tokens used in the response. This is a good way to make sure your charges don't get out of hand. When you give your prompt a test, you'll see ChatGPT's response. In this case, we get a good summary of the image I uploaded. It still kind of creeps me out that AI can see images like this, but I'll accept the rise of Skynet if that means saving me some time at work. Once you've set up your ChatGPT action in Zapier, publish your Zap to turn it on. Now your prompt will run the same way every time. The only thing that will change will be any variables you provided, like the image from the Airtable record that triggered our example automation. That's how it works in a nutshell, but I know a lot of you will want more control over your prompts than what you get from that simple analyze image action. So now that we have the basics covered, let's take a closer look at a much more flexible action, conversation. With conversation, you'll get all the same functionality that you get when you open up ChatGPT in your browser, but with even more options to fine tune the AI's response. It's a great default choice if you're not sure which action to use when sending your automated prompt. Let's go through each of the settings now. First up, there are two alerts about how this integration works. The first one's just saying that your data will be sent to OpenAI and will be subject to their policies. No surprise there. The second one notes that Zapier will only wait 50 seconds for the prompt to finish, so you shouldn't expect a super long response. If you want ChatGPT to take a crack at your novel's next chapter, using Zapier probably won't work out. For longer prompts and responses that will take longer than a minute to generate, you may want to check out Pipedream instead. Stay tuned for a beginner's guide to Pipedream on this channel coming soon. But back to Zapier. Your first couple options are very straightforward. You can write your message here much like you would while using ChatGPT in your browser. You can also pick the model you want to use. You'll have way more options here than you would with the chatbot interface. You can check out the resources board for pricing and more details to help you pick the right model for your use case. If you can save money with a cheaper model and still get a good result, why not? Next, you can provide a memory key. Every time you enter a memory key, ChatGPT will remember previous conversations that also use that same key. This can be a useful way to give your conversations more context over time. Here, you can provide an image if you'd like to include one in your prompt. Just note that not all ChatGPT models can analyze images. Again, check the resources board for links with more info. Next, you have a few options to set a username, an assistant name, and assistant instructions. If you fill them out, these options will help give the AI more context for the role it should perform or the identity it should assume. However, it won't actually create a new assistant in your OpenAI developer platform. We'll quickly go over how you can do that and why you might want to at the end of this video. With this setting, you can set the maximum tokens used in the response. Finally, you have a couple technical settings you can use to tweak the AI's output, temperature and top P. A higher temperature will produce a more random result, while a lower temperature will tend to be more predictable. Top P is a loosely similar choice. Here, a lower number will result in more diverse output, while a higher number will cause the model to stick with only the most probable words. If you'd like to learn more about temperature and top P in all their nerdy statistical detail, there are some links you can check out in the resources board. For most use cases, you can just leave these to their defaults, but you may want to experiment just to see what happens. Changing these can be particularly useful if you're looking for a more creative or unusual output. Now that the action is fully configured, we can test it out. It takes a moment to run, hopefully not more than 50 seconds, and now it's done. The output looks good, and you can send this output to any other app with a Zapier integration. For instance, you could send it as a DM in Slack like this. Once your automation is all set, just publish it and turn it on to start using it. I briefly mentioned the concept of assistance earlier, and as you explore AI automation further, I'd strongly recommend checking out the conversation with assistant option. So what's an assistant? In the OpenAI developer platform, an assistant is a predefined set of instructions for ChatGPT to follow. You can easily create one in the developer platform without writing any code at all. In addition to text-based instructions, you can also give your assistant documents to use as context, like images or PDFs. 
If you're looking into automating ChatGPT, then you probably have some similar prompts and activities you keep using AI for. Assistants are a great way to provide the context and depth you need for your repeated AI tasks. Your assistant will also be available to access from multiple automation providers like Make and Pipedream. If you use the conversation with assistant action in Zapier, then you can just select your assistant from a dropdown and use all of its pre-configured settings for your automated prompt without needing to fill out all the options again. Although you will also have the choice of overriding most parameters from Zapier if you'd like to. Ultimately, it's up to you. Both conversation options offer similar settings, but the assistant option can help to quickly create several automations that reference the same AI persona from any automation provider you want. ChatGPT is already a massive time saver on its own, but automating your most commonly used prompts will make it even more efficient for you and your team. Connecting ChatGPT to Zapier is easy and gives you all the options you need to craft any prompt you want. So try it out today with one of your own workflows and let us know what you think in the comments down below. What kind of prompts are you automating with ChatGPT and Zapier? Are there any other automation and AI topics you'd like to see us cover on the channel? Your suggestion could become one of our next videos. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow.